What did we discuss part three? Does anybody remember what part three was? Yeah, the merciful pastimes of Radharani. Merciful pastimes of Radharani. What were those? What was one of those merciful pastimes of Radharani? One. Raise your hand. Don't just yell it out. Yeah. Uh-oh. I scared. Which one? Jackal. That's pretty merciful. You, you know anything about jackals? They're really dirty. They're really nasty. They're, they're, they scare people. And she accepted him. Made her, made him one of her gopis. Jackal. What else? Merciful Radharani. Yeah. Shamananda Pandit. Shamananda Pandit. We built before Shamananda Pandit was Shamananda Pandit. Who was he? Dukhi Krishna. Radharani took Dukhi Krishna to her spiritual abode and hit her spiritual form, which was Kanaka Mantri. That was pretty merciful. Gave him or her new tilak and a new name and a deity, Lala Lali. That was the second visit. Nice one. Very merciful. Any other remembrances about merciful Radharani? Sweet rice. Huh? Sweet rice. Speak slower. <laughs> Sweet rice. Uh, Sweet rice. For Sanatan Goswami. Very good. She did some, she got some nice service. And Sanatan Goswami was upset that now he's taken service from Radharani, but the sweet rice was so good he kept eating it <laughs> and shared it with Rupa Goswami. Another one? Whoa, whoa, one, uh, just one at a time. Speak slowly and clearly, one at a time. Radharani covered Raghunath Das Goswami's head because he was baking in the sun. Remember that one? Okay. So Radharani's merciful pastimes. Now part four is Radharani's youthful pastimes. Youthful pastimes. And one of those youthful pastimes has to do with coquila birds. You know what a coquila bird is? Cuckoo. Cuckoo. That's like a cuckoo clock? You know what a cuckoo clock is? Oh, come on. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bird that makes a sound it sounds like what they used to make in Germany called cuckoo clocks. When it's an hour, and every 15 minutes some bird will come out and make a sound, and then comes the bird, the hour, the cuckoo would come out and make a cuckoo, however many times it was for that hour. So the coquila is the name of the cuckoo bird in local language over there in Vraja and just to the northern side of Yavat there's a large forest celebrated forest filled with coquila birds so there's two pastimes connected with uh, coquilavan coquilavan now let's go back a little bit. Vrishabhanu was the father of Srimati Radharani. And there's two different narrations of how 
the palace for Radharani was, was constructed by her father. It had a dome for gazing at the moonlight up on the top part of the building. Uh, one description is in Garga Samhita, it narrates that during that one year when Krishna became each of the cowherd boys and each of the calves, you know that pastime? You're not responding. You don't, you're not sure. When, when Lord Brahma stole the calves and cowherd boys and put them in a cave, you know that story, right? Okay. And then for one year, Krishna manifested identical forms with each of the cowherd boys and each of the calves. So identical that even their mothers couldn't recognize this wasn't her son. Could you imagine coming home one day and your mother doesn't recognize you? <laughs> or somebody else looks like you and your mom doesn't know it's you? It isn't you, it's somebody else looking like you? That's not going to happen. <laughs> Mothers know their children. But Krishna's likeness, his voice and everything, exact, exact, duplicate. But that's not a problem because Krishna made the first one. He can make a duplicate, isn't it? No problem. So for that one year, according to Garga Samhita, during that one year, Krishna made a, a suggestion that, that each of these cowherd boys, because in Vedic culture, young boys would marry young girls. They wouldn't live together. Just, you know, they know who they're going to, when they grow up, who, who they're married to. Solve that big problem. And uh, so for one year, Krishna married, and as each of the cowherd boys, he married each of the cowherd girls. So Krishna married them. And when that happened, Abhimanyu was married to Radha. That's Garga Samhita. And then there's a different description in Vidagta Madhava, the mysterious Vidagta Madhava. We read the, uh, the first evening about Lita Madhava and you keep going and you get into Vidagta Madhava. And Mukhara, Mukhara was Radharani's grandmother. Mother Yasoda's mother. Radharani's, excuse me, not, not Kirti Das mother, excuse me, Kirti Das mother, Mukhara. After first shifting Radha to the village of Shantanuvas, she arranged this marriage so that Radha would be protected from Kamsa's lust. Krishna came to know later. There's, a, there's, there's an interesting detail. Here's the interesting detail. In, in um, Vedanta Madhava, someone came and presented a, uh, some cakes to Krishna. Said there was a wedding at our village. Oh. Um, and he, he bit into the cake. Oh, this is a really good cake. Who was it that got married? And the person carrying the cakes said, Radha. And Krishna spit out the cake. <laughs> <laughs> to Abhimanyu. That's Vedanta Madhava. So the so-called husband, but it's it's said many 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 places, um, he, Abhimanyu, and all of the other so-called husbands of the of the gopis, they never touched their wives. They did so. There there was the, the shadow of the person who they were associating with, and there's uh, Mukhara, bless her heart, made this nice arrangement. Here's a, a photograph of a coquila bird. 
the ones that make that cuckoo sound. And it's a celebrated place. Apparently, still today, there's a forest outside in the northern direction from Yavat, where there's a forest and there's many coquila birds. So this is described in Bhakti Ratnakar. What's Bhakti Ratnakar? Bhakti Ratnakar is a book uh, in which one devotee who was an associate of Lord Chaitanya next generation, he's taking uh, two devotees on a tour through all of Vraja, describing the place and the pastimes at each place. And it was written down shortly after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime. So, in Bhakti Ratnakar, one of the places he shows is this Kakilavan, a van, a forest where there's Kakila birds. And he describes a pastime in Bhakti Ratnakar. The pastime that he describes is one time Krishna wanted to see Radharani. So, being very clever, he went into the Kokila forest and made a sound like a coquila bird. And you know how it works with birds. And if you've been to Gita Nagri, you know there's many peacocks. And when one peacock makes the peacock sound, what happens? There's a peacock chorus. There's like 16 guys, ladies and guys, they all have a big uh, peacock chorus. And then it gets quiet. It's kind of like dog, you know, one dog barks and 16 dogs will bark. And so Krishna went into the Kokila van, Kokila forest, and made a Kokila sound at night. And all the Kokila birds res responded. They had a big concert, Kokila concert. And everyone could hear. It's very unusual. So Radharani were with her her friends were with her and they requested Jatila, the mother of Abhimanyu we'd like to go see those kokilas, they're, they're uh, singing so strongly, so nicely she said, that would be very nice why don't you go so they knew it was Krishna and sure enough when they reached the inside of the forest along with the, the kokila birds that were doing their kokila sound they saw Krishna and Radha and Krishna were enjoying together in the Kokila forest. This is in Bhakti Ratnakar. And there's a similar description because the same forest is described in, by Rupa Goswami in Ujvala Nilamani where uh, Krishna was very eager to get Radharani's association and so he went inside the gate, climbed up a tree, and started making a kokila sound. And um, Radharani knew me to staking her stick and challenging. So Krishna became quiet. The, the cuckoo sound stopped. And she was shaking her stick and threatening whoever you are. You're in big trouble, and she was in the warpath. After some time, she fell asleep. She sat down and fell asleep. And then Radharani and Krishna could then openly converse. And it went on until the dawn. When dawn came, Abhimanyu came back because he was tending the cows at night for their protection. And he came back and saw his mother sleeping in the courtyard. And he asked her, what are you doing? And she told her story. There was somebody, you know, I don't know who that somebody is, and you, your newly married wife, someone may be here to take advantage of her, and so I came out and he, he was a little dubious about his mother and said, if you think it's like that, 
Then, uh, so before Abhimanyu came back, Krishna snuck out. And he said, out, then starting tonight, I'll lock the gate. So the next evening, Krishna came again. And when Krishna came again, the gate was locked. So he had to take shelter of a um, Betty tree grove. B-E-R-I, berry trees are Indian plum trees. So in the, that's what they look like in the, in the flowering season. And he would climb up a tree and started making his cuckoo sound. And Jatila heard the cuckoo sound. And, you know, she didn't go outside because the gate was locked. But Krishna had to stay there the whole night. Now he, when he went there, he didn't know that he was very sad. He had to stay the whole night and was unable to meet with Radharani. And Rupa Goswami describes something similar uh, in Padyavali. When Krishna arrived in Radha's courtyard for the rendezvous, now this is a, a, a verse compiled in Padyavali by Rupa Goswami, but written by, many of the verses are written by other acharyas. When Lord Krishna arrived in Radha's courtyard for the rendezvous, his tinkling ornaments sounded like the cooing of cuckoos and other birds. He suddenly heard the door open, and he also heard the continual jingling sound of conch shell bracelets. When he heard the arrogant Jarati, it should be Jatila, but it says Jarati, call out, Who is there? Who is there? He became pained at heart. He spent the entire night hiding in a tree in the corner of the courtyard. Very similar, very similar description. So pastimes with Radharani and Kokilavan. Then there's another pastime, a celebrated, well-known pastime, where uh, Krishna was very unhappy that people were interfering, making obstacles for his meeting with Radharani. So he poured his heart out to Purnamasi. And together, Krishna, here's a painting of Purnamasi, they made a plan of how to stop that difficulty. By the way, this is a painting that was drawn by Nishinga, the two, the, excuse me, Prahlad Nishinga. That's his artwork. Pretty good, huh? So, um, the plan was the next morning Krishna couldn't get out of bed. Purnamasi happened to be there that particular morning by plan. And Mother Yashoda tried to wake Krishna, and he was just groaning and holding his stomach and saying he didn't feel well. And so they got doctors, and the doctors examined him, and they couldn't figure out what to do. And so they all turned to Purnamasi, because she's you know, such a mystic lady. She's got to know some solution to this. She said, yes, in fact... I have sacred mantras that I'm very confident can cure Krishna's fever. But I require two things. That the mantras are strengthened and empowered by the sun god. And the daughter of the sun god, the Yamuna, I need some of the Yamuna water, but I need that Yamuna water carried to Krishna in a golden pot with 100 holes that can be achieved by one who is a perfectly chaste woman. <laughs> so Nanda Maharaj and all the elders, and you know, they, had, they tried everything, and they, so they're ready to go. They went to the bank of the river Jumuna, and Purnamasi showed them, this is what you have to do. She dipped the golden pot in the river Jamuna and lifted the golden pot 
and all the water drained out because it has 100 holes in the bottom. And so she then said, who is the perfectly chaste lady in this assembly? And no one was ready to say they were the perfectly chaste lady because if the water drained out of the pot, the hundred hole, then it would be the chaste. So they deferred to another person to defer to another person and no one was ready. But when it came to Katila, who is Abhimanyu's sister, she was very proud. Yes, I'm perfectly chaste. And, you know, there's some drama that goes with it, but when she placed the golden pot into the river Jamuna and proudly lifted it up, all the water drained out very quickly. And the goal is to cure Krishna's fever. He's got to have this water to go along with the mantras of Purnamasi, who they all had faith in. So, Jatila was next. And very proud and old Jatila, and same thing happened. Boy, they were both embarrassed in front of it. They're the only ones that stepped forward, but all the water drained out. So they're not perfectly chaste. Because Purnamasi confirmed it could be achieved by one who was perfectly chaste. So now what to do? You, you can put two and two together and get the answer right. Lalita said, I know. Radharani is perfectly chaste. So Radharani was sh shy and not willing to come forward, but everyone was pushing her forward. And, and so she picked up the pot with 100 holes in the bottom of the pot and all the water stayed in the pot. So the, the, there was a nice procession all the way from the river Jamuna back to Nandagram where Krishna was taking rest. And the, the plan was say the mantras and sprinkle the water over Krishna's body and he would become well. This was Purnamasi and Krishna's plan. And sure enough, he, be, he instantly sat up and said, I'm hungry. Is there something to eat? Because <laughs> when you have a fever, you're not hungry, right? So everyone was now happy. And Radharani was claimed, acclaimed to be free from any all the false accusations. Jatil and Katila were very ashamed that the person who they were always criticizing for being unchaste was proven by Purnamasi to be perfectly chaste and not themselves. So that's a nice, um, well, well often told story of Radha and Krishna being cleared of infamy. Beautiful paintings. You get a second nice beautiful painting. Srimati Radharani and Krishna. And now there's three leelas where this is youthful pastimes now, where, where Krishna is, is unable to tolerate separation from Radharani. Or he makes some arrangement for meeting with Radharani despite obstacles. So here's one when they're both younger, Radha and Krishna are younger. This is before Radha's being married. Um, one day, while staying at Varsana, not at Yavat, but at Varsana, Srimati Radharani was unable to go to the house of Nanda Maharaj to cook for Krishna. We heard this yesterday, right? There was this benediction given by Durvasa Muni that her cooking would be super special and so forth and so on. So one morning she was unable to go to Nanda Maharaj's house to cook for Krishna. And Krishna was very sad. He couldn't see Radha. So he went to Varsana, hoping that he might see Radharani. It's a beautiful drawing. Krishna meditating on Radha and her gopi friends. 
Krishna climbed up the top of a hill and from there looked upon the house of King Vrishabhanu, expecting to see Radharani. But she was nowhere to be seen. <coughs> then Krishna started making a sound like a peacock, calling out to Radharani. And Radharani understood. When Radharani heard the sound, she understood that it was not the sound of a real peacock, but the voice of Krishna. And so, she thought to herself, Krishna is calling out to me, but my mother may come to know that it is Krishna and not a real peacock. Without informing her mother, Radha left the palace and went searching for Krishna following the sound of his peacock call. Radharani searching for Krishna. Of course, eventually she found Krishna. After some time, Radha and Krishna met at that top of the hill. And while they were together, they, they enjoyed various pastimes. Krishna's here enjoying decorating Radharani's hair with nice flowers. And Radharani is not just interested in how beautiful she looks with nice flowers in her hair. She's interested in her loving relationship with Krishna. So swinging on swings and their wonderful amorous pastimes together. Meanwhile, Radharani's mother, Kirtida, started searching for Radharani all over the place but she was nowhere to be found. Following the footsteps of Srimati Radharani, Kirti Da reached the entrance of the cave where Radha and Krishna were exchanging loving talks. Krishna noticed Kirti Da before Kirti Da could see them. So what did Krishna do? Immediately Krishna accepted the form of a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> Thus, to Kirti Da, it appeared as if Srimati Radharani was sitting and caressing a peacock. <laughs> Kirti Da said, Radha, what are you doing here? I was worried because I could not find you for a long time. It's already lunchtime. Let's go back home. Radharani returned to the palace with great sadness. Krishna transformed from his peacock form to a shamasundar form and returned home for lunch. Morning pastime. That's number one. And the, the series of three is Krishna's um, wishing to get Radha's association and having some obstacles. But the obstacles make the meeting more exciting and very attractive. Now, there's two descriptions of Krishna appearing as Kali. One of them is in this book. It's um, Srimati Radharani by um, Bhakti Purushottam Swami. And I'm not as familiar with this one as I am with the other one. But uh, the, the narration goes like this. Krishna was very eager to meet with Radharani. It was springtime. And when he saw the newly sprouted leaves and flowers of spring, Krishna started to play on his flute, standing in his threefold bending form under a kadamba tree on the bank of the river Jamuna and with his flute calling Radha. When Radharani heard the sweet sound of Vangshi, she was very eager to meet with Krishna. She had cooked varieties of sweets and cakes for Krishna, chandan and flower garlands for Krishna. Her sakis had dressed her very nice to meet with Krishna. And then on the pretext of going to Surya Kund, 
we're going to hear some more about Surya Kund soon. And do Surya Puja, she left Yavat with the plan to meet Krishna, but Krishna wasn't at Surya Kund, he was at the river Javuna. In fact, not only by the river Jamuna, by Bhangshivat, some of you have been to Vrindavan. And if you haven't, come with us or sometime go to Vrindavan. So one of the places in Vrindavan where Krishna performed Rasalila is Vangshivat. 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 The forest where Krishna blows his Vangshi and calls the gopis for a rasa dance. So there's a, a grove of trees or a bower where the, the gopis had arranged a meeting place for Radha and Krishna, and they had everything nicely decorated. Krishna saw Vrinda Devi, Vrinda Devi, and requested Vrinda, please make some arrangement for my meeting with Radha. I have played upon my Vangshi flute, and I hope she will come very soon. Vrinda Devi said, Whatever you have ordered, I will do immediately. I'll bring Radha very soon. Please come inside this kunj and wait. So there's a grove, little grove of trees. After some time, Radharani came. Lalita, the other Sakis, they enjoyed pastimes. Vishaka arranged their sitting places, performed arti, etc., etc., etc. Offered Pushpanjali. And here it says to Kishore Kishori. While they were enjoying Kutila, suspecting something's up suddenly appeared. She approached very quietly and looked through a hole in the kunj. There she saw Radha and Krishna sitting together on a flower bench. Previously, Kutila, her daughter, had informed her brother, Abhimanyu, that Radharani and Krishna always meet each other. But he never believed her. Kutila thought, today I must bring my brother here and show him personally. Then he'll believe it. So she quickly went to the cow pasture, found Abhimanyu, told him what she saw. And Abhimanyu said, if what you're saying is if what you are saying is true, if you can show it to me, then I will arrange proper punishment for Krishna, and never again will I let Radha go out of the house for Surya Puja. So off they go. Katila, his sister, and Abhimanyu, the husband, so called husband, stick in hand. Abhimanyu getting more and more angry with every step. Vrinda Devi was on guard. She saw them both coming. She gave a heads up. And they were, by that time, they were screaming aloud and shouting. So, Vrinda informed Radharani. And when Radharani heard what was about to happen, she turned to Krishna and she was in anxiety. Saying, you know, he'll, what will he do? He's very cruel-hearted sometimes. Please save me from this danger. I take shelter at your lotus feet. And so when danger comes, Radha also takes more intense shelter of Krishna. Krishna said, don't be worried. Have you ever heard that anyone has died untimely by meditating on the feet of Krishna? Your husband is a devotee of Kali. Now I will accept the form of Kali. You pretend to worship me and sit next to my feet. 
So, Radha and Krishna, along with Radharani's associates, acted according to Krishna's plan. When Abhimanyu reached the Kunj, he started sh saying insults. Now you see them on the left there. That's Abhimanyu with his herd, cow herding stick and his sister Katila. And there's Krishna serving the form of Kali. Krishna transformed himself into the four-armed form of Shamakali, holding different weapons in his hand, java flower garlands on his neck, and sindura on his forehead, wearing blood-red cloth, his flute hidden in his cloth. <laughs> he showed his long tongue, just like Kali, Sitting at his feet, Radharani was pretending to offer Kali Puja, holding some flowers in her hand. At this time, Abhimanyu entered the Kunj in an angry state. He forced his way in, but did not find Krishna. Instead, his worshipable deity, Devi Shamakali, standing there in her forearm form. His wife, Radha, was worshipping Kali with focused attention. Oh, Abhimanyu is a worshipper of Goddess Kali. So he immediately offered his obeisances and offered prayers and stood in front of Krishna with folded hands. Then he turned to his sister in an angry mood. Where's Krishna? All I see here is Radha, so devotionally serving the lotus feet of, of Mother Bhagavati which are remembered even by Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. My most chaste wife is offering flowers at Devi's feet. You are calling such a chaste lady like my wife, a woman of no character, all blame to you. <laughs> Today I will excuse you, but if you ever falsely give a bad name to my good wife, Radha, then I will punish you and throw you out of the house. That's what it says. So, Katila was very sorry, very confused, and Abhimanyu left, Katila left, and Krishna again assumed his Krishna form. So here's um, another painting. There's a chopped head in one hand. <laughs> and over on the left, there's Abhimanyu and Katila and some extra person. And here's a painting of Govardhan Hill in the back. Krishna is worshipping. And so on. Now, that's uh, at Vangshivat. Now, there's another description that's different but quite similar at Yavat. And here's the deity at Yavat, some, a similar thing, Abhimanyu. First it was Jatila was saying things and said she, she you know, wanted Abhimanyu to come and see for himself. And Abhimanyu came out and Krishna assumed this form. Radhi, Radharani was wor worried. This is a six-armed form. Radharani was worried. So... Uh, this pastime was told, it's in, it's in the northeast corner of the, of the temple building. It's just on the outside now. That it wasn't there for, for the longest time, but, you know, in the past few years, there's this deity of goddess Kali that Krishna had assumed, and Abhimanyu was pacified because he was a worshiper of Kali. So one pastime at Vankshivat, Another pastime at Yavat, Krishna assuming the form of Kali in the midst of meeting with Radharani. So it's very clever how to get out of a difficult situation. Here's another, and this is the final. You know the story of Krishna hiding inside a box? Who knows the story? You know the story? You want to narrate the story? It's the one from 
I think I better narrate the story. <laughs> that the tone of your voice right away is like, I better narrate the story. It, it, there's a, a series of pastimes written by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur that he, he it's, the translation is Krishna's prance, pranks. Pranks. You know what that a prank is? P R A N K? You heard? Yes? <laughs> Do you know? Prank? Yeah, it's like a joke or a, a, a trick. You trick somebody, it's a prank. Yeah. So the story of this particular Krishna hides inside a box to meet Radharani begins at Nandagram. Nandagram is the home of Nanda Maharaj, and Yashoda was putting a box together. Now, there's, there's a, the, the long version is very, very attractive because it has prose and it has some verses. I think I'm going to do the longer version because how nice it is. So, Mother Yasoda is putting together a box, big box. And Krishna comes along, little Krishna, wanting to know what's in the box. And, you know, little kids say all kinds of things. And parents, you know, they entertain what the little kids are saying, but they're busy doing what their adult behaviors are. My mother just sort of replied, My dear son, I'm filling up this box. Krishna, what is in it that you're keeping so carefully within the box? Mother Dasoda, why do you need to know? Just go outside now and play with your dear boyfriends. I really want to know what you're doing. If you don't tell me, then I will not leave this room. Yasoda, within this box, I'm putting sandalwood sticks jeweled pollen of the camphor lotus, musk, and red kunkum powder for making nice scented body ointments, and for making different kinds of dresses. I'm packing extremely valuable cloth, waist ornaments made of tiny tinkling bells, earrings, bangles, uncommonly rare lapis lazuli gems, emeralds, and pearls. So Krishna wanted to know, is this for Balaram or for me? <laughs> <laughs> My dear son, I will tell you if you will listen. There's another box that I've already prepared for you, and it is much bigger than this one. It's filled with very valuable jewels and cloth. I've also prepared a similar one for your brother, Balaram. <coughs> so Krishna wants to know, then who is this box for? Who is such a dear object of your affection? And so this is, the, I wanted to read because it's so nice. This is Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's way of describing the affection of Mother Jasoda for Radharani. Just as Providence has bestowed you upon me as a result of my meritorious austerities performed in the past, in the same way, there is one daughter here in Gokula who is like the medicine that sustains my very life. She is just like soothing camphor from my otherwise burning eyes, it is her clothing and ornaments that I'm keeping in this box. Lord Brahma has created many different feminine qualities, such as beauty, good behavior, devotion to superiors, shyness, simplicity, humility, and so on. But there is one girl who is such that when all those good qualities take shelter of her, then only can they become great. Usually, if ordinary girls take shelter of such feminine qualities, then the girls become great. But there is one girl who is so wonderful that when all those good womanly qualities take shelter of her, 
then the qualities themselves thereby become truly glorious. This is most amazing. This girl's name is Sri Radha. And it is for her that I have natural love and affection. So Krishna is hearing Radha's name and he's trying to control himself. <laughs> His body starts to have goosebumps and he covers his body up with his cloth and he starts asking more questions. Who is this girl? Whose daughter is she? And where does she live? How is it that you have such intense love and affection for her? Kindly explain everything to me. He wants to hear Radharani's glories from his beloved mother, Jasoda. It's, it's the, the, the Sanskrit is very elegant, but the, the English translation reads, From the jewel mine of uh, my girlfriend Kirti Das womb has arisen a sinless, matchless jewel of a daughter. By the shimmering waves of this jewel's aura, she is illuminating the sun itself. Usually the sun makes ordinary jewels shine brightly, but this daughter jewel born to Kirtida and Maharaj Rishabhanu is so effulgent that her aura makes even the brightest summer sun perk up and shine more brilliantly. This girl is verily the personified austerities of King Rishabhanu, and she lives at the palace that he made for her at Yavat, along with her husband, Abhimanyu. But just now, her husband has arrived here at our home in Nandagram. He's outside with your father, the king, king Nanda Maharaj, tending to some household affairs. When Abhimanyu comes to this inner chamber to see me before leaving, I will then tell him in sweet words. So this is a refrain, a refrain that comes again and again in this composition of... I'm reading the whole thing because it's the detail is fantastic. Oh, Abhimanyu, please take this box yourself and carrying it back to your home, kindly offer it to your good wife, Sri Radha. So while she's having this conversation with Krishna, um, a maid servant named Labangalatika comes into the room. And Labangalatika, the maid servant, announces to Yasoda the two expert goldsmiths named Rag Rangana and Tankana just arrived. So Yashoda wants to take care of some goldsmith work. So she turns to Dinishta, an elder member of the, the uh, entourage of the family. Oh, Dinishta, I'm going outside now for a few minutes in order to arrange for the manufacture of Krishna's ornaments, crowns, earrings, and bracelets. Please stay here and keep an eye on the box until I return. So Yasoda exits. Krishna starts rubbing his hands together and with his friends headed by Subal they have a little discussion. They take the box to a solitary place, they open it up, they remove all the jewels, clothing and ornaments, gave everything to Dhanishta, the contents, and then Krishna got in the box. <laughs> So Ball and the other boys closed the lid and put the box exactly in the same place that it was before. A little time passes. Yusota finishes up with the goldsmiths and there's the box in the, just the way that it was before. And in comes Abhimanyu. So she gives Abhimanyu a little stanza to say when she gets to back to her home. Oh, Abhimanyu, I prepared a box full of jeweled ornaments for your wife. It contains many riches, like spotless gemstones and gold necklaces, and many different types of cloth, 
as well as various ornament ointments, like musk camphor and so on. Many nice things are packed in different layers. I want you to personally take this box and offer it to Sri Radhika because I don't trust anyone else to do it responsibly. Present it to her in a solitary place and relay her this message of mine. So this is one that's repeated. It's, it's um, Mother Jasoda glorifying Radharani through the writing of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Oh, you who give pleasure to my eyes. Oh, you who bestow fame and glory upon Kirti Da. Oh, Radhe, within this box, I've sent you an extremely brilliant aura, Krishna. It contains ornaments just befitting your body, Krishna. And I'm sure you will cherish them to the utmost, Krishna. By all of these dear things, may you become radiantly decorated every day, thus achieving great fortune and happiness. May you become enthused with newer life forever and ever. Abhimanyu said, I will carry out your order. He lifted the box, put the box on his head, and started back home. Now, meanwhile, inside, Krishna's giggling. Because he knows exactly what's going on. <laughs> Throwing himself into a, an ocean of novel prankish fun, he breaks into a sweet, mischievous grin within the box. That foolish, dull-brained coward Abhimanyu then begins to think to himself, Today, I have become really rich. I have now become fortunate and successful. Judging by the weight of this box, I can just imagine how many heaps of pure gold and jewels must be packed inside. With all this wealth, I will purchase millions of cows. Just like my friend Govardhan Mala. I will have the goddess of fortune fixed permanently in my own home. Thinking like this again and again while traveling with a box at his head from Nandagram, Abhimanyu arrives before his own home at Yabat with his entire body studded with bumps of joy and his eyes brimming with tears of loving bliss. Thus, feeling great happiness, he could not perceive even for a second the fatigue of carrying such a load upon his head. Who would feel any difficulty carrying such a divine object composed of the thickly condensed, absolutely complete ecstatic bliss such as Krishna? That's Vishwamath's commentary. <laughs> so he repeated these words to Jatila. This is what I'm supposed to say to Radha. And he repeats the words because it's the refrain. It comes again. Hearing all this, the foolish old woman Jatila became blissfully overwhelmed and began to think to herself. No, he's thinking, I'll get wealthy, have lots of cows. Jatila is thinking, by the power of great fortune, a wonderful thing has happened obtaining such a matchless gift today, my daughter-in-law will now become very pleased with my son Abhimanyu. And she laughs and says to Abhimanyu, this box is so heavy that even myself, your wife, and your sister Katila together could not possibly lift it. Therefore, kindly lift it and bring it into Vrishabhanunandani's bedroom placing it upon the raised platform there. Once it is there, then she can quickly and easily open it up and see all the wonderful gifts and dear most ornaments inside. So Abhimanyu carries Krishna upstairs, <laughs> places it on the table, and seeing the large box, Lalita and all the other girlfriends perk up and feel supreme bliss. Radhika's left arm and her heart begins to palpitate and she's feeling something. 
there's something very wonderful inside. My dear girlfriend, she says to Lolita, this dreadful abode of my mother-in-law is completely pervaded only with the most depressing, miserable suffering. Now how is it that my left eyelid, arm and thigh are suddenly dancing without any reason? It seems as if there is no possibility whatsoever observing such an auspicious sign here. What to speak of obtaining the benediction of seeing such a sign come true as long as I'm trapped here in this horrible place. So Lolita says there must be something very special inside, essentially. Radhika says, just by seeing the box, my mind has become surcharged with an indescribably ecstatic mood. I can't even begin to put it into words, so it goes on. So as they're, as they're speaking, Abhimanyu places the, the, book, the, the box on the table that his mother said, a raised platform, and then recites the same message from the other Yasoda. Says so three times, same message. And then he leaves. So now the girls, the gopis, are wondering, what's in the box? What's in the box? The very second Radharani opens the lid, the moon-like Sri Krishna suddenly springs out of the box. <laughs> Hi, Bo! <laughs> and stands upright. <laughs> Seeing him there, instead of valuable clothing, ornaments, and cosmetics, all the girls who are surrounding the box exclaim, Aha! Oh my goodness! What's this? Oh! As they clap their hands joyfully, laughing and giggling. The Krishna, the abode of all artistries, feels fully satisfied in his own prestige, exhibiting majestic motions such as a mild and soft, gentle manner. Then comes further intrigue. Lolita says, Oh, Radhe, this so-called decoration has come indeed, this so-called decoration that has come is indeed glorious. Your husband who brought it is also glorious. Sri Yashoda, who sent it to us, is also glorious. Her message to you is also glorious. In other words, just become decorated with the jeweled ornaments that was sent in the box and thus dutifully honor the order of your three superiors. Radha becomes very embarrassed. And she blushes. She smiles lightly and says, My dear Lalita, a rascal thief has stolen all the clothes and ornaments that were given to me by Mother Yashoda. Taking them out of the box, he has kept them in some other place while keeping himself within the box. <laughs> Go right now and explain all this to my mother-in-law, Jatila, and quickly bring her here. <laughs> Lolita says to Krishna, Oh, clandestine rendezvous lover of Radha, rascal, <laughs> carried by Abhimanyu. You rode on Abhimanyu's head in order to rendezvous with his wife, Sri Radhika. By doing this, you are desirous of seeing the earth become completely bereft of all chaste women. Well, all right. What's done is done. But now you should immediately return all the cloth and jewels that you stole from inside the box. If not, I'm going to bring Jatila here right away and expound the real truth of your so-called fame and glory. Krishna's ready. Oh, my dear Lalita, your girlfriend Radharani is very crooked. <laughs> and she is extremely skilled in serving her own selfish purposes. And now here's his story. I entered the box while playing at home. Your girlfriend sent her husband forcibly to carry me and the box, bringing me here just to be framed with this bogus accusation. My dear Radhe, 
I became fascinated by smelling the natural wooden fragrance of this box, sending all of the items contained in it to you via Danishta. I then climbed in the box just to make, make myself nicely scented. Right at that moment, your husband happened to come along by chance and brought me here. <laughs> So Radharani gets all the ornaments and clothing and, and ointments and things, and Danishta uh, delivers them, and there's this fantastic pastime where Krishna is very eager to meet with Radharani, although there's many different obstacles and intrigues in between. There's there's six five or six pastimes in this series of written by Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur about Krishna's pranks. I think before we're done we'll hear some more of them. They're really nice. They're very detailed like this. So that's uh, uh, number four in this list is Krishna, some of Krishna's useful pastimes. And then tomorrow, playful pastimes in Radharani's lotus feet marks. No, that's a little esoteric for a Sunday feast class, Radharani's lotus feet marks. We might have to modify that plan a little bit. But I know someone that has made this presentation. Prematrangi made this presentation about Radharani's lotus feet. And it was done very nicely. But I don't know if it's good for a Sunday feast class. We'll have to think that way. Did you start working on it already? A little bit. We may have to do, um, adjust things a little bit, I think. Radharani's pastimes. Any discussion or comments? That time uh, when Krishna came out in the box, yeah. uh, Abhiman was not, uh, did not see later on. Abhimanyu wasn't there. He, we don't hear about what ha happened. But they did not, they, he did not come to know later on, no? Uh, you know, all these stories, we don't hear what happens afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and what you know, you, we, one could assume, but you know, the, the, the stories are so um, intricate. It could be many different things. You know, the, he carried the box. You know, Krishna's story was he was in the box. The, the items are going to go to Radharani anyways because he's not going to interfere with items that are meant to be gifted to Radha by Mother Jasoda to not get to Radha from Mother Jasoda. So they get there. Danishta has them. She gets them. So it's just Krishna was in the box. And Krishna's got his excuse. I was just playing in the box. He gets, you know, smell nice. <laughs> now my question is, when he was carrying on the head, he must be ruling. He did not, uh, not uh, get any... You have to, I have to ask Abhimanyu. <laughs> Krishna has mystic powers. Maybe Krishna wasn't rolling around. I don't know. Someone else? Yes. Maharaj, uh, I had when when you were narrating this past time, I was thinking something, but maybe a speculation. Uh, Radharani is so is pleasing to Krishna. That means her services to Krishna is so pleasing. Yes. And uh, I was thinking in a different way, but you know, somebody wants to gift to Radharani the jewelry and gems and whatnot. But uh, as a devotee carrying that jewel, it will turn into Krishna himself to offer it to Radharani. Well, you have created. I was thinking. 
<laughs> but I, you know, and you're not a match for Vishwamath. <laughs> That's what I said. Krishna can do anything. Yeah, he can do anything. He turned himself into, we heard, he turned himself into a peacock. <laughs> Turned himself into God as Kali. So he can turn himself into whatever he wants to turn himself into. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Shimati Radharadi. Are there something online? Which book is this from? What? Which book is this you are reading? She was asking the book details. Srimati Radharani, authored by Bhakti Purushottam Swami. But what I read, the long passage that I read, is not in this book. There's a shortened and a little adjusted version of what I just read. What I just read is taken from a book written by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur called Charmatkar Chandrika. Shamatkar Chandrika, the pranks, the moonlike pranks of Krishna. And that's that. There's different translations, different versions of that book that's printed. And this is this is a collect is his collection of different stories, kind of shortened. I like the link, the lengthy version the actual version that he is taking from. No harm. Okay. Shrimati Radharani Ki. Yeah. Yeah. I have a plan. one question. Is like, how he has got the strength to carry Krishna on his head? <laughs> <laughs> he has gifted Gopal Pani for so many days. 